the least a dialect and rational nexus between the prescriptions against the promotion of homosexuality embedded in section 11 of the act and the objective of the imputed law. In our judgment, <coughs> sections 11 and 2C and E of the Anti-Homosexuality Act are not so severe as to undermine the delicate balance between societal and individual group interest. Rather, they simply represent the composite position of the law to ensure the operations of any individuals with due regard to the prevailing laws. We therefore find that sections 11 to C and E of the Anti-Homosexuality Act are demonstrably justifiable in a free and democratic society. We therefore find no violation of Article 29.1E and 38 of the Constitution, Article 6. Similarly, the Anti-Homosexuality Act, having criminalized homosexuality, it follows that any usage of property that is contrary to that law would run afoul of Article, Articles 8A and 242 of the Constitution. In any case, we find no violation of the right to assembly under Section 112D of the Act. Relatedly, Section 112D of the Anti-Homosexuality Act resonates with Section 31 of the Uganda Communications Act and Section 13 of the Anti-Pornography Act, all of which seek to preserve societal morals by restraining the use of media communication to publish, broadcast, and disseminate official offensive material. These limitations, freedom of expression, are legally permissible within the confines of Article 19.2 of the ICCPR. On the other hand, the scope of academic freedom is restricted to intramural expression and or publications within a university or academic context, and to a lesser degree, subject to determination, but on a case-by-case -case basis, the extra neural expression that ensues <coughs> outside the academic context. Extra neural expression may, in any event, be subject to such restrictions and limitations as are recognized under Article 19 three of the ICCPR, as well as the dictates of Article 43 of the Uganda Constitution. In the result, we find that sections two and three of the Anti-Homosexuality Act are not inconsistent with the rights, with the right to freedom of speech and expression embedded in Article 29.1a of the Constitution. In section 11, and 22C of the Act does not violate the right to freedom of religion encompassed in Articles 29, 1C of the Constitution. Furthermore, we find sections 11 and 2B, C and E of the, Act, of the Act to represent permissible rights limitations within the confines of Article 8A and 43 of the Constitution, and therefore Constitution Accordingly, issue number 11 and t number 10 and 11 fail. Issue number 12, the right to practice profession, color on lawful occupation and business. The nature of economic rights envisaged in the individual rights to practice one's profession and color on any lawful occupation, trade or business. <clears throat> With the greatest respect, we do not abide the view that the right of religious leaders or organizations to enjoy the uninterrupted use of their leased premises or cater for disadvantaged persons necessarily mandates them to constitutional protection for persons so housing that are engaged in unlawful activities. We therefore find no violation of Article 30, sub Article 2 of the Constitution by sections 11, 1, 2D, and E of the anti homosexuality. We do not find any inconsistency between section 17 of the Act and the socio-economic rights 
highlighted above, given that it is simply mandates the, the responsible public official to make subsidiary legislation for the implementation of the Act. We similarly reiterate our findings under Article 9 that <coughs> Section 14 of the Act is inconsistent with the right to health. In any case, had we not pronounced ourselves on its constitutionality, we take the view that the reporting obligation under Article 14 would indeed have a chilling deterrent effect on access to health care by homosexual patients afraid of being subjected to criminal prosecution. <coughs> With regard to Section 12 and 13 of the Impeachment Act, it seems to us that the limitations to the full enjoyment of the right to self-determination as a problem are not only constitutionally within the principles of Article 17 1C of the Constitution, they are in tandem with the provisions of Article 29 2 of the UHDR. Each of them endorses the limitation of rights that are prescribed by law and are intended to protect the rights and freedoms of others for the general welfare of society. In relation to the more specific rights of property and health, sections 9 and 11 2 D of the Anti Homosexuality Act do not deprive a defaulting property owner of his property. Rather, they are blind prohibition in respect of property use, lease, or licensing. The penalties for which are custodial sentences for natural persons and suspension of organizations' operation license. To the extent that the, pro the privatization of property does not have no violation of Article 26 of the Constitution. <coughs> Nonetheless, Article 251 of the UHDR and Article 11 of the ICRC recognize the right to an adequate standard of living for everyone to include housing and medical care. Legal provisions that have the effect of not simply restraining, restricting the right to housing but totally denying homosexuals access to housing are unduly deliberative and unjustified in a free and democratic society. In this case, we think that Section 9 and Section 2D of the Impeached Act have the additional effect of compounding homosexual person, persons' sustainability to mental health problems. Meanwhile, the unintentional transmission of HIV finds no justification in the criminal law in as far as it defies the element of criminal intent or mens rea, which is a vital component of the concept of crime. This indeed is the approach that was adopted in Section 43 of the HIV and AIDS Prevention and Control Act 2015 which restricts criminal culpability to the intentional transmission of HIV. We therefore find that Section 3.2.C of the Anti-Homosexuality Act perpetuates the susceptibility of persons that are HIV positive to mental health issues and thus impedes their right to enjoy the highest attainable standard of mental health. This is a violation of the right to health as envisaged under Article 12 of the ICRIC and is inconsistent with Article 45 and 85 of the Uganda Constitution. With regard to sections 1, 2, 3, 6 of the, of the Act, we find that the Uganda National Health Policy constitutes significant policy interventions directed at particularly vulnerable section of society, the LGBTQ community, and represents significant steps undertaken to ensure non-discrimination of LGBTQ persons in the provision of health services. 
with the specific regard to HIV AIDS interventions, we are aware that attempts to legalize against homosexuality dates back to 2014, where the first anti-homosexuality bill was passed. Before that, the country had historically included on statute books the crime of unnatural offenses that would have included anal sex. There is no evidence to support the view that apparent aversion to homosexuality was any less then than it is today, but despite the existence of these laws. Uganda made significant progress in the right to health with a specific regard to HIV AIDS. Against that background, it is inconceivable that the enactment of anti-homosexuality law would so impact the trajectory of HIV prevention treatment and control in Uganda as to amount to demonstrable retrogression. In any event, the Committee on Economic, Social, Cultural Rights did, in the general comment number 14, highlight the four elements of availability, accessibility, acceptability, and equality, triple A2 which are considered essential to the enjoyment of the right to health by all, as enshrined in Article 1, Article 12, sub Article 2D of the ICESCR. Acceptability in that context requires that health facilities, goods and services are respectful of medical ethics, cultural appropriate age, and gender sensitivity. In the words of the human rights first sheet number 31 of the human right of the of, of the right chairs, they should be medically and, and culturally acceptable. We construe this to mean that all persons and organizations that serve in the health sector, particularly community-led and community-based NGOs, should be mindful of the law. <coughs> Uh, policies and cultural sensitivities of communities within which they operate and refrain from conduct or activities that defy them. Communities affected by HIV, as well as any lingering societal or substructural contradictions in respect of, in respect of HIV related services, resources, and tools, ought to be approached accordingly. In the result, we find that Section 3.2.C violates the right to health enshrined in Articles uh, 12.1 of the ICESCR and recognized under Article 45, 287 of the Uganda Constitution, while Article 9 and 11.2.D of the Anti-Homosexuality Act are inconsistent with the right to adequate standard of living enshrined in Article 25 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the right to health enshrined in Article 12 of the ICECR. They recognize it under Article 45 and 87 of the Uganda Constitution. However, we do not find sections 1, 2, and the rest of sections 6, 11, and 2, E and E of the Impinged Act to be inconsistent with or in the controversial of Objective 14B and 20 of the National Objective and Directive Principles of State Policy or Articles 45 and 87 of the Constitution. Consequently, issue number 14, number 13 partially succeeds. Issue number 14, remedies available to the parties. The petitioners sought a myriad of remedies that essentially call for the nullification of the entire Anti-Homosexuality Act 2023. Having held as we have in the body of the judgment, we decline to nullify the Anti-Homosexuality Act 2023 in its entirety. Neither would we grant a permanent injunction against its enforcement. We, however, at the judge sections 32, 
section 3, sub article 2 and C of the Act to violate the right to health, enshrined in article 12, 1 of the ICECR, section 9 and 11, sub section 2 and D of the Act to infringe the right adequate standard of living lined in Article 25 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights and Article 11 of the ICCR, as well as the right to health and Section 14 of the Act, to be inconsistent with the right to health, privacy and freedom of religion that are respectively recognized in Article 12 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights, Article 14.1 of the ICC and Article 29.1c of the Uganda Constitution. It will suffice to observe here that provisions of the international instruments to which Uganda is a party gain recognition in Uganda's constitutional dispensation on account of objective number 28b and national objective and dialectic principles of state policy and articles 45 and 287 of the Constitution. There is straight law that costs follow the event unless a court for good reason decline, decline, decides otherwise. Case law abounds on the wisdom of not condemning losing parties to costs in the public interest litigation. It is abundantly clear that this petition was conversed, has conversed matters of grave national importance and immense public interest. Consequently, the circumstances of this case do not warrant a departure from the general rule on the costs. Consequently, the circumstances of this case do warrant a departure from the general rule on the costs. Disposition. The upshot of our judgment is that this petition substantially fails with the following orders. A. Sections 3, subsection 2C, section 9, 11.2D, and 14 of the Anti-Homosexuality Act 2023 are hereby struck down. Each party shall bear its it is so 